of the living God fall afresh on me and us this day, that we might hear a fresh word from the word, a word that will help us for the living of these days. Amen. So I don't know about you, but I love a good fire. And I'm not a pyrotech, you know, one of those people. You know what I mean? Out by the fire pit on a starry night, or in the family room on a cold night. In fact, I gave in to one last fire at home this past week. I mean, you got to beat them or join them, right? I love sitting by a fire. There's just something about a fire. There's a calming effect to a fire. And of course, add a glass of wine and you've really got a great evening. <laughs> sitting by a fire also helps me to empty myself, to refocus sometimes, just sit by the fire. The text for today from the Gospel of John has a fire in it. But this is a fire with Jesus cooking a breakfast for the disciples. Now I must admit, as I've already kind of admitted in the children's message, that a fish breakfast is not my idea of a really good breakfast. Of course, you remember weekly, just by hearing the accent or something, I don't know, you remember that I am from the South. So come on, Jesus. How about some biscuits and gravy? some hash browns. I'll even go for a veggie omelet. I guess as you found out, if you live in Seattle like my oldest daughter, you might say some salmon for breakfast. I was in the grocery store many years ago when we lived outside of Buffalo and the fish market manager went to our church. So as I passed Tony as I was going through the fish market section there in the grocery store, Tony yelled out to me and he said, Reverend Frank, we got some fish today on special, fish that Jesus ate. I'm thinking that's got to be some old fish, but anyway. He said tilapia. Tilapia is the fish that Jesus ate. Well, I, did, I really didn't believe him at the moment, so I looked it up later and sure enough, Tilapia was found in the Sea of Galilee during the time of Jesus. So Jesus hosts this crazy breakfast with tilapia cooking on the fire. Can't you just smell it cooking? Now the story does not start or end at the fire. If you read between the lines, you know that Peter was really down, disillusioned lost in a fog of sorts because he had followed this rabbi Jesus for three years and now he was quite not quite sure where to go with his life. Jesus may have risen but the reality of that was just not settling in with Peter at the moment. So in his lostness, in his disillusionment, he decided to hang on to the one certainty that he knew, and that was fishing. So he declared to the other disciples, I am going fishing. So they got into the boat with him, and it says that night they caught absolutely nothing. So as if life was not overwhelming enough for Peter, remember this guy had denied Jesus a while back, his very friend, he was totally overwhelmed with grief, and now he cannot even catch fish. And he was a fisherman. He's totally overwhelmed with grief, and he can't catch a single fish. So out of that fog, out of that night of nothingness, comes daybreak. And it says that Jesus is on the beach, and Jesus declares to them in the boat, children, remember Jesus had that kind of dry sense of humor, children, you have no fish. 
Then cast the net to the right of the boat, and you will find some. And of course they did, and they caught some serious fish. Now with this happening, it says that John said to Peter, That's the Lord! So Peter, who's at his wit's end by now, jumps into the water and swims ashore. And it says that when they had gone ashore, they saw a fire with fish and bread on it. Jesus said to them, bring your fish, come and have breakfast. And they sat in silence. I love this story. The fire, not only that, but I love going out to breakfast. I love the fact that when it seems that we are in the biggest fogs of our lives, the answer lies by the fire, stopping us in our tracks. And as corny as it may sound, sitting by the fire with Jesus, sharing a meal, dining with the Lord Almighty. You see, these disciples, they had lost their passion. Have you ever lost your passion? I sure have. They had lost their passion, and yet they were having a hard time asking for help. Sounds like a bunch of New Englanders, doesn't it? It's been said that it's hard to ask for help. Childlike faith is not for people who need a little help. It's for people who are desperate, who are at the end of their rope, Faith is for those who are not too proud to wave their arms and admit that they are grounded. Peter jumps in and he waves his arms and Jesus meets him with breakfast on the beach. Peter had lost his passion. And one thing we know about Peter is Peter was one extremely passionate guy. But he had lost his passion. So Jesus, it says in the story, kind of gets Peter aside. And everybody else kind of drifts to the back a little bit. He gets Peter to the side and he says, Peter, do you love me? In fact, he asked Peter three times, do you love me? And Peter, in his grief, says to Jesus, you know I love you, Jesus. You know I love him. Now Peter, he's been lost in this fog. He's been lost in his disillusionment. No doubt he's thinking at this point from the words of the psalmist, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I can't even go fishing without you showing up. Have you ever been like Peter? lost in something, unsure of so many things, in that state of lostness, may we smell the fire burning. May we accept God's unconditional love searching us out, not to condemn us, but to have breakfast with us. We like Peter, often lose our way, don't we? And the passion of our faith dissipates. Mike Iaconelli tells, used to tell a story of how a friend of his invited him to speak at a Northern California Toastmasters convention. He says, when I was young, I was very active in Toastmasters, which was a business club to teach men and women to speak publicly. So I was very happy to accept his invitation. Six months later, and you gotta know Mike Iaconelli to understand this, he never was on top of things. But six months later, he said, I'd forgotten all about the event when my friend called to remind me. The event was a two hour drive away, and he called me about two hours before I was to be there. I jumped in my car and drove intensely but I was relaxed because of my many years of speaking experience. 
I would just talk about what I've learned about speaking over the years. Well, I arrived 10 minutes before I was to speak. My friend Tom breathed a sigh of relief and then he began to prepare me. Now remember, Mike, you're giving the keynote address today. No problem, I said, but remind me again what areas these people were from. Well, Tom said hurriedly, they are the postmasters from every city in Northern California. I interrupted, what, 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 what did you say? He said, they, these are the postmasters from postmasters? I thought you said toastmasters. <laughs> no, Tom said, why would I say that? I am a postmaster after all. In two minutes, I would be speaking to a room full of postmasters. On my way up to the podium, I decided in desperation to talk about something I frequently talk about, the loss of passion. It was one of the most rewarding experiences I have ever had. Halfway through my talk, people were crying throughout the audience. When I was done, they all rose to their feet to underscore my call to rediscover passion. They were expecting a lecture on stamp regulations. And I was expecting to talk about using voice inflection and gestures. But just under the surface, a group of postmasters got in touch with their longings for passion again. Peter came to that breakfast that day with Jesus, probably thinking that he was going to get a lecture, a raking across the coals, so to speak. But what he got was a compassionate, loving talk about how to regain your passion. Do you love me? Then feed my sheep, tend my sheep. Peter, if you want to come out of this fog of disillusionment, if you want to serve me, then take this breakfast on the road. Color outside the lines. Work like crazy to get more people at the fire. Because you see, Peter, in serving others, the passion will come alive again. In our bad times, in our hopelessness, in our times where we lose vision and purpose, I believe a fish and bread breakfast is awaiting. For churches that lose their way, a fish breakfast with Jesus is waiting. So let our minds and our hearts go wild with imagination, thinking of ways to feed the sheep to take care of those who Jesus called the least of these. Because you see, the way out and up is through service. The way to regain the passion and purpose is through stopping in our tracks, spending some time by the fire of God's love and grace, spending some time with each other, drawing strength from one another, time tending our fire, being tended to, so may we let this fish breakfast turn into a mission. As we gather around the fire every week here, may our breakfast time with Jesus turn into something that will break down the walls. So join me by the fire. May our breakfast with Jesus turn into a mission, turn into a purpose for the living of these days. Amen and amen.